Throughout Bleacher's run, there's always been some crazy good hacks abilities such as Kyo Kisugetsu, which can control the five senses. But in the Dazu Blubble arc, Kubo turns the hacks ability meter up 1000 degrees to a point where a significant amount of stern readers, especially the high tiers in this arc, have seemingly unbeatable hacks abilities. One of the characters that have unbeatable godlike abilities is the main character of this video, Grammy Tumix, who has the ability to turn his imagination into a reality by warping reality itself, which is described as a phenomenon close to the power of a god. Being able to conjure a life wiping meteorite from nothingness and instantaneously creating an entire multi-galactic to universal sized pocket reality are just some of the things Grammy is able to do with his shrift. But unfortunately, people like to throw him to the side and label him as dumb because of the things which he could have done with his shrift that he didn't do. While the dude think Grammy is quite arrogant and egotistical, he's far from the dumb character people portray him to be. In the making of this video, I myself have come to the realization that I have been sort of underestimating Grammy's power as he does have the potential to be comfortably top 20 in the verse and arguably above most of these two staff when I get into why today. Before we get started, if you're a returning viewer, make sure to like the video and leave a comment. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy Bleach and want to see more content like this. Before we just hop into his scaling, I feel like it's necessary to explain exactly how his shift of visionary works and why exactly he should scale to the things he conjures. Otherwise, he would have no AP as all of his attacks are based on his shift. As you should all know, Grammy is a Quincy. And the main source of Quincy's power is manipulating and gathering Rishi particles from the atmosphere and combining it with their own spiritual energy, thereby creating weapons or any sort of ability with it. Rishi can be translated to spiritual particles and are the main component of souls in the Bleachverse and all spiritual matter. Everything in the Soul Society and Hoikamundo are composed of Rishi, making it easier for Quincy's to use their power. And because Rishi is the main source of Quincy's power, and as I said before, essentially the same thing as Ryoko to them, it is seen multiple times that each one of their abilities come from the manipulation of it, such as Howering Kyaku, which is a method which Quincy's use to travel quickly over short distances, just like how Shinigami's use Shampoo and Amar Kart's use Onido, and Blue Verse by making Rishi flow into their blood vessels. Something I want to mention that I feel people often forget is that Quincy's do have reality to it. Then their Rishi manipulating skills have also shown to increase as well. For example, when Uruyu activated his Let's Steal form, he got significantly stronger and he was able to manipulate Rishi at a remarkably higher rate than normal. It was so remarkable that even Mayuri started pissing down his pants when he saw how Uryu was able to bend Rishi to his will. Another example is Quincy Volstendig, which is seen as a successor to Let's Steal. With an increase in Ryuk and Ryasu comes an increase in Rishi manipulation as well. They can absorb the trees, sand, rocks, and buildings in Hueco Mundo or Soul Society. They can even absorb spiritual abilities like Orihime's and entire living souls such as Aeon. Lastly, after Yuha absorbed the power of the Soki and gained exponential power, he was able to completely dismantle Wanderers from the Serite and recreate the Soki Palace. So these feats clearly illustrate the correlation between Rishi, Ryoku, and Ryasu and Quincy. You may now be wondering how this applies to Grammy. Well, it's seen that Stern Raiders whose shrift involves creating something, it's stunned by manipulating Rishi or materializing Rishi, which is equal to their spiritual energy. For example, when Lily recreated his guns that were sliced apart by Shansui, he states that the guns he uses were created by his own Rishi, similar to any Quincy blow. Bambi Ada is able to create Rishi that turns anything they come into contact with into a bomb itself. And when Gerard gets killed and he evolves with the miracle, he is visually shown to be collecting Rishi from his surroundings to become stronger. The very nature of Quincy's powers are based off of Rishi, and Grammy's imagination power should be no different. Grammy is able to create things through Rishi manipulation, which is combined with his spiritual energy and spiritual pressure. So the things he conjures directly to him as he would need to output that energy into existence. What further backs this up is that throughout the Kenpachi fight, which I will get into soon, Grammy is shown to be fatigued as he continues to conjure more things. Fatigue directly implies that he has to exert some kind of energy when he warps reality. In contrary, he's able to imagine bigger and more complex things as he increases in power. So now that I've explained why Grammy scales to the shift, let's hop into the scaling. So the first thing he's able to do is react to Yachiro's attack and turn the bones of her arms into cookies. He then goes on to state how his power of the visionary works by making his imagination into a reality. Kampaji pulls up to the battlefield and Grammy states Kampaji seems strong, just as he imagined. Moments later, he creates a grand stage for him and Kampaji to fight on, and he states that he thinks he's the strongest Stern Ritter. Immediately after, Kampaji swings his sword at Grammy, and unlike most people would think, Kampaji sword is stopped by Grammy's body alone. Grammy explains that the imagination is the most powerful thing in the world and that he imagined his body was harder than steel. Kepachi, after hearing this, slices right through Grammy and states he simply cut him as if he was cutting through steel. Grammy heals himself through his imagination and the fight continues. Grammy imagines lava which casually gets watered away by Kepachi. Zoraki tries to rush Grammy but he imagines the air Kepachi was currently in into water and then slams him down into the crack in the battlefield, which he also imagined. Kenpachi breaks out of that crack and tries to attack Grammy, but Grammy is able to react to this attack and imagine a pillar of steel to block Kenpachi. 
While Grammy was dealing with Kim Pachi, we learned there is a limit to his power, as Yachi was completely fine, even though her bones were made up of cookies just a few moments ago. Zoraki slices through the pillar and attacks Grammy, but he reads this attack. It then cuts to Asken who is watching the battle from afar and is in awe that someone is capable of going toe to toe with Grammy. He goes on questioning why Yuha would let Grammy out his cell anyways, which Pebe then cuts in and agrees that Grammy is a monster that should be locked away for life. Asken gets up to leave because he doesn't want to get caught up in the catastrophe Grammy is about to cause. But little do they know, this little interaction shows how the other Stern Raiders are indeed scared of Grammy and don't want to deal with him and his power. Even Asken who would later become a Shu Staffle member. Back to the fight, Kepachi explains to Grammy that if he truly is the strongest, that he should want to crush the strongest. Grammy states that nobody ever tried to lay a finger on him because it was obvious he was the strongest and there was no need to prove it, so he had never felt the need to crush anybody. But for some reason, he wants to crush Kenpachi so bad. This moment right here is the answer to the misconception many people have about Grammy. One of the people's main complaints about his character is why didn't he just imagine Kenpachi's bone the cookies, or just imagine him dead or something. The reason why is because Kenpachi simply put was the only dude with enough balls to try and fight him, and because of this, Grammy wanted to test his power and actually fight someone for the first time. And simply imagining his opponent dead wouldn't be a battle if he could do that. Grammy imagines multiple modern day guns and pirates at Kenpachi. He also imagines multiple missiles and some of them also land on Kenpachi, but he slices the other one in half before it reaches him. The smoke clears and Kenpachi is fine, but he was damaged by Grammy's attacks. Kenpachi attacks Grammy again, but he was blocked by a metal dome around Grammy. He ends up breaking it and slicing through Grammy. Grammy holds the rocky sword in place and imagines a giant hand which comes down on Kenpachi. Kenpachi of course breaks out of the hand and he starts continuously slicing Grammy down to the point where Grammy almost imagines his own death. Fortunately for Grammy, Kenpachi stops what he's doing and allows for Grammy to recollect himself. After recollecting himself, another Grammy appears and he states he will show Kenpachi his greatest power, which is the ability to create a life with his imagination. The clone Grammy imagined couldn't die nor be cut by Kenpachi, and by creating himself, the power of his imagination is doubled. So at this point, Grammy is essentially two times stronger and he imagines a meteorite that will kill Kenpachi along with this irritated self. When the meteorite was created, we see multiple people reacting to it in shock, like Basby and Askin, as it falls down on the Serite. Gerby states that even if hypothetically he was killed at that moment, it wouldn't change anything because the meteorite is already a reality. Most people will try to calculate the size of the meteorite and the Serite to obtain the destructive capabilities of the meteorite, but that's severely underestimating this feat by only looking at it from that aspect. The importance of this feat is that Grammy was able to use his power to imagine something that can destroy everyone in the Serite, meaning Grammy with his power doubled has enough attack potency and Ryatsu to kill everyone in the Serite at that point. A battle in Bleach is a battle of Ryatsu, so if Grammy didn't have this level of power, he wouldn't be able to imagine something that can damage or kill everyone in the Serite logically. Everyone that was in the Serite would include characters like Shansui, Asuka, and most importantly Yuha Ba. Now of course, whether or not this attack had enough attack potency to completely kill Yuha is questionable, but this attack most definitely had enough attack potency to at least have really damaged Yuha. And this is shown when Jugum, after seeing the meteorite, orders others to protect Yuha. Jugum wouldn't be worried if this attack couldn't affect Yuha in the slightest, and Jugum would be the best character to back up this feat because not only is he Yuha's right hand man, and should know more about Yuha's capabilities than most characters, but additionally, the last time we saw Jugum visually and verbally worried about Yuha is when Ichigo attacked Yuha in Fubing Bankai and this attack of course was able to damage Yuha. So Jugum should know whether an attack can and cannot damage Yuha. So Amp Grammy was able to create an attack that can kill or damage base Yuha, which is the same and arguably stronger Yuha that was stated to be able to take the power of Yamamoto's Bankai. Grammy having this level of power is consistent and supported by the novels which I'll talk about later. Moving on, Kenpachi being Kenpachi was able to casually one shot this meteorite with his Shikai. I know some people might question how Kenpachi was able to destroy this meteorite that was made to destroy everyone including him. Simply, Kenpachi activating Shikai became stronger than anything two times in Grammy had imagined when he created the meteorite. Grammy appears next to Kenpachi and now has seven visual clones, meaning Grammy is at least seven times stronger and he imagines outer space itself to ripen and trap Kenpachi in. So Grammy was able to use his imagination powers to create a multi-galactic to universal size pocket reality and I'll explain to you why this is the case. First of all, like I've already explained, Grammy is a Quincy. Consecutively, to use their powers and create their abilities or even spaces themselves, they need to use their Surami Rishi by combining it with their Ryoku and now putting that power into reality. For example, the Rishi inside the Wanderers Empire was created when the Quincy lost the battle 1000 years ago and created spaces within the Rishi inside the shadows of the Serte. As Asken explains, the plan was a success because the Soul Society is full to the brain with their source of power, which is Rishi, and the things they can do with that were infinite, such as creating invisible empires or even universes. So Grammy simply put was able to output and manipulate Rishi, which is equal to his Rei Ryoku, which is then exerted as spiritual pressure on a multi-galactic universal scale. 
And since this feat required the output of energy to create something, just like how Ichigo would need an output of energy to create a gates of potential, or how Ron Curse would need an output of energy to create a Sero, or how any Shinigami would need an output of energy to create a Kido, this would scale directly to Grammy's AP and should be calculable in joules, just like how any of the other attacks I just mentioned should be as well. So this is not some reality warping hacks that doesn't scale to this AP as some people like to argue. For those of y'all asking how we know Grammy used Rishi to create it, all Quincy, which would include Grammy, operate under this law set by Kubo, and there are no contradictions, exceptions, or outliers to this law. Therefore, all the evidence shows that Grammy using these same processes of all other Quincy's is the most consistent proposition as it aligns with the officer's statements. In conclusion, Grammy is a Quincy. All Quincy's have been shown to operate under this law. Therefore, it is most likely the case that Grammy operates under this law as well, unless evidence is brought that proves a law valid for all Quincy's is not for Grammy, who is a Quincy. Moving on, let's talk about the argument that Grammy only created a portal to an already existing outer space. Let me just say there is not a single piece of evidence that supports the claim that Grammy only created a portal. Rather, every statement made on this feat blatantly states that Grammy created outer space in its entirety. In the novels, it is stated that he materialized outer space itself in the Serte, and in reference to Grammy's brain, they say, a Quincy's brain with the ability to instantaneously create outer space. In the end of the chapter sketch that Kubo normally does, he shows an illustration of Grammy with an entire cosmos in his head, also alluding to the fact that Grammy created outer space. When you break down the Japanese kanji, all it says is to wrap or to be covered with outer space. So again, nothing suggests that Grammy only created a portal in opening or any synonymous words of portal. That is simply a desperate argument people should stop using. Obviously, there is an opening, but that does not mean he only created that opening. The last debug I will address on this feat is to those that try to say this feat is inconsistent because Grammy needed two clones to create a meteorite, while he only needed seven to create an entire universe. The reason why this misconception happens is because people, like I said before, focus on the wrong aspect of this feat. The meteorite itself is not important at all. What was important is that Grammy imagined everyone in the Serate dying. He could have imagined them dying from poison gas or a gigantic gamma ray. It wouldn't change the fact that Grammy would need enough spiritual pressure to damage and kill everyone in the Serate at that point. One of those people being Yu-Haul, who had enough power to handle the strength of Yamamoto's Bankai, which was powerful enough to passively destroy the entire Soul Society, which in and of itself can be argued that Mortal Galactic is universal in size. Even comparing the state of Grammy in those two feats, in one Grammy is relaxed with his hands in his pocket, quite easily imagining this meteorite, and in the other, Grammy is visually exerting his power to create the outer space and moving space time itself to surround Kenpachi and I seen when the clones have all their arms outstretched. Alright, that's enough of this feat, let's move on into the fight. Grammy sliced in half because he forgot to harden his body while trapping Kenpachi in outer space. The clones turned themselves into a bomb which explodes directly on Kenpachi. After doing this, Grammy is visually fatigued and sweating. The smoke clears and Kenpachi is still standing up, although he is heavily damaged from head to toe. Grammy calls Kenpachi a monster and decides the only way to beat this monster is to become stronger than him. While it's in the process of becoming stronger than Kenpachi, his body completely breaks apart and deteriorates. Grammy states he was able to perfectly imagine the level of Kenpachi's power. He imagined his power in its entirety, but what he couldn't imagine was a body that could withstand that power. Grammy states his imagination wasn't the reason why he lost his Kenpachi, rather it was his body. But then Grammy states it doesn't change the fact that his imagination came up short. The reason why he says this is because his body itself is only an imagination, and the true form of Grammy is a brain floating in a container. The next thing you know, Grammy's body ends up disappearing, and that's the end for him. In the novels, it explains exactly what happened here. Grammy imagined a power that would outstrip Kenpachi to Rocky, as he did say he would imagine a power that's greater than Kenpachi. And he also said he imagined Kenpachi's power in its entirety, which would include an even stronger Kenpachi, not just the current Kenpachi that Grammy was fighting. He ended up bringing his own downfall when he was unable to imagine a body that could bear that power. And because of that, he had been awakened from his dream and his brain could no longer function. So at that point, Grammy's power was actually stronger than Kenpachi's. He couldn't use that power, but it's still important to bring up. Grammy has even more scaling in the novel that truly shows how strong he is. It is stated that Grammy was a boy who bearing yu Hall was said to be the strongest of the Stern Raider, someone who could beat anybody. This is backed up by the fact that he was quite casually going to kill every living being in the Serate at that point. It is also stated that Grammy was sealed in a barrier that only yu Hall himself could make. So on multiple occasions, it's portrayed that yu Hall is the only one in the Wilder's army that could fuck with Grammy in terms of strength and power. What makes this even more crazy is that it's implied that Grammy's imagination was stunted due to being imprisoned by yu Hall. You might also wonder what his full capabilities are since we never get to see him use his full power. Well, to answer that, we have to look at Hikone, because Grammy's brain is an ingredient in her existence. Hikone was composed of tens of thousands of Kompaku and many fragments of Ryo. 
Remy's brain is able to withstand the turbid waters of spiritual pressure, surging like a vortex of chaotic consciousness. His power is so strong that it can force Hikone's paradoxical nature to exist. It's also stated that Hikone has the same spiritual pressure as Grammy. It does not have to mean they have the same amount of spiritual pressure though. Hikone was able to rival Ken for your world eye passionist Kampashi, who is significantly stronger than his thousand year blood with counterpart. And he could Grammy at fun. I won't go in depth on how strong Hikone is, but she is easily top 10 in the verse. So in conclusion, where do I scale Grammy? Let's start off with attack potency. In base, he's obviously relative to an awakened eye patch Kenpachi, as he is able to damage Kenpachi and block his attacks. Two times imp Grammy should be above base eye patch Kenpachi, and at least relative to base U Haul, who is relative to Bankai Yamamoto. Whether or not Grammy is actually relative to Bankai Yamamoto is arguable, but he's definitely on the same tier, if not above Shika Yamamoto. And after getting 7 times stronger, he should be relative to Shika Kenpachi due to being able to damage him. In speed, he should be low on relative to Kenpachi because he was able to react to his attacks and tag him as well. So based on this, Grammy should be above almost all the high tier captains such as Sunshui, Byakuya, and even characters like Yoruichi. He should also be above all the pre and post Australian ship Staffu, with the only arguable character being Miracle Amp Gerard. Lily got contested by Sunshui who is significantly below Yamamoto, Asuka was physically below Yoruichi who is also below Yamamoto, Pernita got contested by Mayuri who is also weaker than Yamamoto, Base Gerard pre Miracle Amp got killed by Byaki and Renji who are both significantly weaker than Yamamoto, Miracle Amp Gerard durability got casual sliced by Bay's eye patch Kenpachi and was probably going to get sliced into pieces if Tosho didn't tell Kenpachi not to. He was able to fight a Shikai eye patch list Kenpachi, but that Kenpachi was weakened because of the whole fun, so we can't really assert any relativity there. That's why I say it's arguable. Crossverse wise, Grammy should scale anywhere from multi galactic to universal plus due to creating outer space, which is defined as the physical universe beyond Earth's atmosphere, and scaling to Yomamoto, who is going to destroy the Soul Society. That's all for today's video. I hope y'all enjoyed. If y'all did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video around with your friends. Peace.